So the APC is designed to read the machine-readable part of the passport. So it will look for him within the airline transmission and it will find him. And then it will ask him to put his fingerprints in there to make sure that it corresponds to his identity. What the automated passport control kiosk do is will, it will compare his fingerprints to previous fingerprints that he has in the system. So every U.S. citizen, legal permanent resident of the U.S., uh, person with a B1, B2 visa, which is a pleasure and business visa, and visa waiver participants and Canadians that been in the U.S. before, they have, in the system, they have fingerprints, so what it will do, it will compare them, and it will make sure that it's the person. The passport control kiosk will also ask them the questions uh, regarding agriculture and customs, such as, are you bringing uh, food, are you bringing agriculture products, have you been in the farm before in this trip, to make sure that you're not make, uh, bringing any pests or anything harmful to the agriculture of the U.S. It will also ask if you're bringing more than $10,000. And you will answer the questions in the system. Once you answer the questions, it will, you will submit them and it will give you a receipt that looks like this. Photo right? first. And you will just exit uh, to get your luggage and you'll see a, a CBP officer at the end complete the inspection. Now, are these the first machines being installed in Puerto Rico? No. 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 Okay. These are the second ones. Where, second? where else are they being installed? The first used? ones are were installed at the ferry, at the Dominican Republic ferry. They are on board the ferry. They are on board the ferry and uh, our clients will do this process while they are on board the ferry. And when they get to the U.S., they already have these receipts and they will go to the directly to the CBP officer to finalize the inspection. Okay, any plans for the other airports around the island? Well, that, it depends also on the operators. The operators will, you know, it's, it's for them to buy in into the program. If they buy into the program, then we are able to, to do this program, you know, accordingly. But also, you know, we want to also let people know that at the first part of the entry process is global entry. Global entry, it's, uh, it's a system that also facilitates this process and also, in a certain way, it, it serves as, as a dual purpose. You're also able to do your customs declaration through global entry and you're also able to pretty much avoid having to go through the line here into the entry process. Also, global entry allows you to do that same process if you go into an international airport like Miami, New York, Los Angeles that are very, very, very uh, busy in terms of you know the, the long lines around the process. So Global Entry has does have a cost. It costs one hundred dollars for five years, and also allows you through Global Entry to use TSA PreCheck. So you're also able to do when you go into the entry process into the airport to take advantage of TSA uh, TSA PreCheck.